So let's talk about, let me just show you. Oh, yay. Okay. So we're going to take my buddy, Joe, Joe Smith. <laughs> we're going to open this case. So I'm going to walk you through, just kind of develop some ideas for you. So you can see how fun, I mean, really, this is fun. If you've kind of got this analyst mindset like me, trying to maximize the client's situation, right? Um, this is just so much fun once you learn how to um, do this. Okay, so I'm going to run through a basic illustration. So let's say your client just wants a permanent insurance, like 100000 okay, a permanent insurance. Insurance that will go the rest of their life. Well, IUL is the perfect vehicle. Their health is halfway decent, right? So let's take Joe, our 40 year old. Okay. Um, we're going to write him just regular non tobacco. We're not going to presume he's got really good health. We're just going to keep it very conservative. Okay. We're going to solve for premium based on $100,000. Okay. Option A. Remember, we talked about option A, which is um, using part of the cash value that's earned. It becomes part of the death benefit. So when they get their 100000 part of it will be cash value, part of it will be the amount of insurance they purchased that year for that amount of insurance. Uh, monthly payment, we're just going to use Target because that's a safe, that's a safe premium rate to get to go to age 120, okay? No loans or withdrawals. So we're gonna just going to show you straight up regular illustration. I'm just going to do the quick calc results so you can kind of see what's going on here. So 843 a year, which I think is like 70 something a month. You can see the cash value as it grows. Remember the idea here is not tax for retirement, it's just to get a long-term amount of insurance in place that goes the rest of their life. You can see it grows cash value over time. It also goes to age 120. So target premium is, we'll get it to go all this way out. Now remember I said the corridor Okay, the corridor is when the cash value exceeds the amount of death benefit. So you're buying a minimum amount of insurance. So notice here, when there's $100,376, the death benefit starts going above the starting out death benefit. Right? So that's why the it goes up because the corridor is met and you still have to buy life insurance, okay? So this is paying out through the whole time, 843, which is about 70 bucks a month, which for a 40 year old, it's not bad at a standard health rating, okay? Now let's take a look at what they paid versus what they earned, okay? So this is a kind of an idea to think about. So let's look at the regular illustration and I've got to remember to share the right page because it'll pop up on a different like page. So if you don't see what I'm talking about, like remind me, <laughs> like Bruce is my, um, he's my sergeant at arms. <laughs> okay, so this is the illustration. So let's go to, so this is the play by play. I like to use a 7.15% um, the non-guaranteed assumption, which is really based on the index, the average index, S&P year to year, annual point to point, last 20 years, they projected forward. Okay, so if the past equal the future, this is what it would look like, which, you know, when you look at a 20 year picture, you know, bar any other estimate, you know, it's pretty good. So notice the first 10 years, you, the, they paid 8000 $425, their cash value in it is 4,072. So remember, when they get, if they die at year 10, when they're 50, the 100,000, part of it is the cash value of 4,072, then the balance is life insurance that they purchased because of the cost of insurance starts to, yeah, I'm not gonna go into what I said last time. So notice now year 20, 16,850 is what they paid. Now check this out, 
account value is 13,000. So it's getting closer to what they're, they put into it, which is kind of cool when you think about it, right? That you can get to a point where what is in it in cash value is what you paid in premium. So this is sort of that return of premium idea, right? That you can stop the policy and then get all your money back that you paid in premiums, if that's what you wanted to do. And that's more of a setup comment to set up what I'm gonna show you later on the return of premium idea. Now notice 25,000 at the end of 30 years, they put in 25,000 into it. The cash is 29,000. So after 30 years, okay, if they cash the policy out, then they can get that money and it's basically what they, a little bit more than what they put into it. So this is sort of that return of premium mentality. But typically, you know, people want to keep 100,000 of death benefit going, okay? But the idea here is that they're gonna make back what they put in, okay? So if they just said they want to quote unquote a return of premium program, boom, we can give them a return of premium program. For example, there's only a few companies, I think Merico and American Amicable still have 100% return of premium. I think maybe Mutual of Omaha is 100% return of premium. So if you got a client that's all about the return of premium, then okay, we can fake it by doing an IUL, which I think actually is better, in my opinion. Why is it better, Alex? Because at the end of, who knows what choices you have at the end of 30 years. Maybe 15 years into it, you refinance your house. And then also it's another 30 years. So it goes 15 years beyond that return of premium, that 30 year, right? So, but with IUL, you have the option of keeping it going, right? Like how many people refinance? Like everybody? <laughs> everybody refinances. Even 70 year olds are refinancing. You know what I'm saying? So IUL is the perfect flexibility Okay, perfect flexibility for someone if they do want to cash it out. So if they're thinking about a return of premium program, we can talk about an IUL as a way to do it, okay? But it can keep going. See how it can keep going? They're 80 years old, they put 33,000 into it and I'm showing how they keep making the premium payments, okay? They've got 49,000 in it, okay? So if a client says, well, Alex, I'm just, I'm really not interested in continuing to make the premium payment past retirement. So let's see what happens if we just pay up through age 65. Whoops. Oh no, did I really? Did I? Okay. Oh, I, I shut that. I shut that down. I shut the illustration down. Okay. So let's make a little modification, premium payment. So let's pay premium payment to a 65, age 65, okay? And okay, let's calculate results. I, I think that's all I had to change. Let's see how long it goes. Can you guys see that? Okay, so H pay up to age 65, $962 a year. So it, it, am it amps up the amount of insurance, right? So 962 di divided by 12, nine, whoops. So instead of like 76, it increases it by four bucks, okay? But look what happens. It goes all the way to 120. So is that cool or what? So you can show a client if they just paid four bucks more. See how sensitive it is because they're 40 years old. They just put up a little bit more money. They can pay up to 65 and that circle will go all the way to the end of their life. See how cool that is? To me, that's just, that rocks. Okay. So that's paying $80 a month. Okay. You see how cool? Okay, but let's show you what happens if you fund it at minimum. Let's fund it at minimum instead of target. And let's go to back to year 100 for 
payment. I don't have to capitalize it. Okay. And then let's say monthly, let's say minimum. So when you pay the minimum premium, where, how, where will it go? What will it do? It means you're not funding it at target. It's gonna be funded at a lower amount. So let's see what happens when you don't put enough into it, okay? That will fund it to year 15. After that, they will not guarantee funding. They will not guarantee the policy. Oh yeah, hold on. I didn't put the right. I gotta put solves to none. Uh, see. Oh, I did not change. Okay, I got to make sure all this is uh, minimum. Okay, now I can do it. We can hear your fan. I'm sorry. We can hear the fan above you. <laughs> yeah. Your fan in the room. Yeah. Okay, so 699 divided by 12. So minimum is 58 bucks for a 40 year old. And notice that it doesn't, it's cash value takes a while to even start just because you're funding at minimum. And this says it'll go to age. 83. So it's kind of like a glorified term, you know, and the older you get, the higher the minimums can be required. I never sell a minimum. I just do not sell a minimum. I don't believe in minimum. I believe that they should get a policy. Look, if they want to get a term policy, I'll sell them a term policy. What is it? 50 bucks, 58, 25. So what's a term policy? What's a 40 year term policy cost. <laughs> Alex, you don't do a 40 year term policy. I know. <laughs> you know, if they want a 40 year term, then maybe I would sell them at minimum. But I'll typically, and I'll typically do that. I don't show them they could do this, right? I've never shown, I've never shown minimum. I just never do it. They should buy an IUL my opinion to have a lifetime um, of insurance. Okay, so we established that the target premium for 100,000 for a 40 year old is 75 bucks. So let's, let's double it. Let's say it's 150. So let's change it to 150. So we're gonna go specified or 140, let's do, cause it's like 70 bucks a month for the target. Let's go to 140. Okay, and then let's um, pay premiums to age 65. Let's see what happens. Let's double it. So instead of 70 bucks a month, it'll be 140 bucks a month. Let's jam more cash value and let's see what flexibility we have. So obviously it's gonna go to 120. And then look at the cash values that grow. They grow quicker because they've got more time to compound. You've got, you know, showing that you're paying 25 years. But let's go to the illustration and let's see what we have as far as options. So this could be option number two. Option number one, you want a lifetime plan of insurance. Let's show you op option two. So this is more appeal to their greed, not their need, right? Appeal to their greed, not their need. So check this out. This is 140 bucks a month. This is where I guess it'd be a lot of fun. So check this out. At the end of 20 years, their cash value, if they cashed out, is 47,000, almost $48,000. Now, why do I, why do I think this is a good option? Because 
This is called early termination of their mortgage option. Now, in general, if you run any amortization schedule, roughly you'll have at the 20 year point of a 30 year mortgage, you'll have half of the mortgage to pay off that mortgage, right? And so how do I get it at year 20 to have for 50,000, roughly 50,000 available to pay the mortgage off early? Well, I, I increase how much I put into it so you can create cash value. So now it's at 20 years, it's basically 48,000, it's a couple thousand off. Maybe the next year is when they pay it off because it's 52,000. So why do I show this? Well, I show the client, well, you know, if you double what you put into it, here's what you can do. Let's say that it's a thousand dollars a month mortgage payment, right? So a thousand a month times 12 months times 10 years, I'm going to save you 120,000 dollars off reducing your mortgage by 10 years. But oh, by the way, you had 100,000 of death benefit that would cover the mortgage if you died any time during that time. And you, you earned 58,000, 48,000. Well, let's just say we pay it off a year later. You earned 52,774. In your, for 140 bucks a month, Joe, right? Joe Smith, Mr. Smith, your net benefit of 140 bucks a month is 172,774. The 120,000 that you're no longer making in mortgage payments for the 10 years, you become mortgage free, you own your home outright. For, so tell me what kind of investment on a tax deferred basis, on any deferred basis, where you could get 172,000 for 140 bucks a month. Oh, by the way, that provides life insurance, that provides living benefits, where if you become chronically ill, you can accelerate your death benefit. If you become critically ill, you can accelerate your death benefit. If you become terminally ill, you can accelerate your death benefit. Show me what your stupid broker can show you that you're gonna get this kind of benefit for 140 bucks a month. I'm waiting. Crickets, crickets. Does your broker have a program like this? Let me show you what the calculation. <laughs> and the important thing is there's no hidden fees here. What you see is what you get. There's no fees. Yeah, there's a cost of insurance. Right. You're paying but everything cost is of insurance, but you're also buying insurance. Exactly. You saved one hundred twenty thousand dollars on mortgage payments. You earn fifty two seven seventy four. Your net benefit for one hundred forty times, say, just twenty one years. Uh, you tell me, Joe. Are you think you're going to get a good benefit from that? I'm not going to call this investment. I call this a powerful strategy for you to use for you to use life insurance as a way to pay your mortgage off early. Okay. <laughs> Is this making sense to anybody? Am I like creating some believers that you need to know how to run this software? If you run this software, it gets to be just so much fun. I mean, you just start running circles around all these knuckleheads out there. They're trying to steal your client's money in these fancy securities products. Of course, I'm biased. But I'm biased in a righteous way because I got a policy myself. <laughs> so I think I'm in a position to talk about this from a credibility perspective. Okay. So what am I saying? Like, if you don't have one for yourself, how can you be? Well, I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna say that. I want to say it, but I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> Nothing can compare. <laughs> Nothing can compare to you. Okay, so let's have more fun with this. So let's experiment with max funding. So let's go back to what you know we were doing before, where we're gonna. Um,
max accumulation and income, um, face value. Um, let's say that our client can put 500 bucks a month in. Sorry, I'm going over. Okay. Option A, 100,000. Well, it's going to calculate the face, I believe. Let's take a look. So 6,000 a year to age 65, then 24 grand a year in tax-free retirement. I showed 20 years of payments. I mean, I could show 25 to get them to age 90, you know, but let's just stick with this. So, Let's go back to, you know, measuring the benefit of doing this option by looking at an illustration. Okay, so it pays till age 65. So again, let's look at how much at year 10, he put 60,000 in, he has 48,000 in cash. He's got 120,000 at the end of year 20 now he's got 160,000. Remember, this stuff starts building up due to interest compounding. By year 25, he's put in um, 150,000, and then he's got 220, 252,000, okay? So he's taken 24,000 out tax-free. So by the age 70, he put 150,000 in, right? He got the benefit of 123,000 plus 348,000 that's in the death, that's in the account, plus the death benefit. So if he died, okay, so let's take it out to a your age 80, 150,000 he put in, he's gotten the benefit of all those payments tax free at 370,000 and a death benefit 122,177. So what is that? Oh, it's so over 100% return if you live to age 80, tax free tax-free. See how cool that is? So when you use max, when you max it, right, it's going to maximize the death benefit. You see the death benefit jumped up to 474,000. So it won't mech out. So Demetri won't mech out. Okay. That's why you use the max, you know, max accumulation. So, anyway, so that's some of the stuff that I want to share with you. You know, fun with IULs. And if you, if you continue to play with it and just see what happens when you fund it at different amounts, you can, like, get it to where it's optimized at a certain year where you can show the client, hey, to get all your money back to pay your house off. You know, I challenge you to, you can do this with the smart UL product even, okay? But I like F&Gs, and I'm starting to like Columbian Life when I figure out, you know, how to do all this stuff on their software, which appears to be pretty easy, right? So again, it doesn't take that much to learn this. And here's the other thing that will help you. The people at F&G, you call them, they will help you with all these scenarios. They will teach you everything about how to do an illustration. They will teach you everything. This is how I learned it. I watched Gina Hawks' um, video on running these illustrations on National Life Group and F&G. You know, that's how I learned it. But then um, on these complex cases that we did for the um, split dollar program, I called them up. They walked me through everything. It was so cool. They actually have a split dollar in their, in their software where you can actually choose a scenario which is split dollar program, which is just really cool. Anyway, that's a little bit beyond the scope of this, but I'm telling you, man, you got to get smart at this because you're going to, I mean, would you rather write 
a hundred thousand dollar or a, like Vinod fifty thousand dollar premium, or write what? How many policies did I say it took? Hundred and was that 160 policies or 160? I can't even remember. It was some ridiculous amount anyway. <laughs> All right, gang. There you go, man. IUL is where it's at. If you need any help, give me a call. Leads, man. Get leads. <laughs> Start investing. For those of you who are interested in that other program, um, let me know. We can work something out. Okay. Anyway, rock on. God bless everybody. Take care.